Sorry, just a minute. Okay, so um, Mr. Ami Isaac, you know, if, if you would not mind, can you just lead us in prayer as we start? Mr. Ami Isaac. All right, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, let's. <clears throat> I hope I'm clear enough. Yes, you are. All right. Um, we'll just spend a few minutes to thank God. A few minutes, a few seconds. Just to appreciate God for how far we've come. Um, it was a wonderful session yesterday, and uh, trusting that today will also be a wonderful time. Uh, so, can we just bless the name of God wherever we are? Just appreciate Him, acknowledge Him, acknowledge Him. Psalms 100 will tell us that we should acknowledge that He is the Lord. He's the one that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. Yes, so can we acknowledge him indeed? Acknowledge him that he's the one who made you. Acknowledge him that he's behind all these. Yes, he's the author of all these that you are seeing in check. He's the one walking us both to will and to do. And we appreciate you. Say your will. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are merciful. We are so good. God, we say thank you. God, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we exalt you. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus of Amen. Um, finally, from my side, so that the play can continue. Uh, the Lord will help us to pay attention to the name and to be able to gain maximally. Okay, that there is that possibility of just coming and listening. It's an online meeting. We can get distracted with different activities. Uh, so, um, want us to pray individually, you pray for yourself, and then you pray for that next person that is on this call and will join us. Lord, please help us to pay attention. Help us to pay attention. Help us to pay attention, and that the purpose of this retreat will not be lost. The purpose of this retreat will not be lost. Hope we are praying. Oh, help us, Jesus, to gain maximally. Father, help us. Gain maximally. The seeing eyes, the hearing ears, is the Lord that gives them both. Beyond the speakings, that the Spirit will communicate this to us. Beyond the speakings, that the Spirit will communicate this to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We exalt your holy name. We give you all the praise and all the worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 We exalt you. Jesus' name. Okay, Mr. Isaac, are you done? I hope I, I, I hope I didn't miss you. Okay, is Mr. Isaac done with the prayers? Are you done with the prayers, Mr. Isaac?
Okay. So I want to welcome everyone to this meeting here to this um this morning or this evening, sorry. You know, um, this is a leadership retreat, and the whole essence um, of this retreat is for us to understand what Czech is all about um, so that we can have multiplied impact. So um, in, in the days when they were building the Tower of Babel, uh, the Bible said that the people are one, their language is one, and there is nothing that they set their mind to do that can be restrained from them. So in other words, if we are one, if our language is one, if we speak the same language, then it means that there is nothing that we determine to do that can be stopped. So the whole essence of this retreat is for us to have a better understanding of the vision, the mission, the future of Czech, so that we can all so before we take our speaker of today, oh, I think it's already time for him to come up. Okay, so is Mr. Emmanuel ready? You want you want I want to introduce you. Let me. Are you ready, sir? Oh, I can't see him online. Okay, so while we're expecting him to come up, uh, let me just introduce the fact that in Czech, we have um, three major directorates. The first is the Director of Programs and Outreaches. So Czech is a outreach organization. Czech, I mean, it's an outreach organization. So all we majorly do is outreaches. Uh, so we have a, a, a directorate um, that manages the aspect of out programs and outreach. And the person in charge of that directorate is uh, Mr. Ayoliki Emmanuel. And if I say a little bit more about him, I hope he's around. I'm trying to call him. Um, even though the main thing we do in Czech is outreaches, there is no way we can have successful outreaches without funds and without adequate project planning and execution. Okay. Okay, so, okay, he sent his slide already, okay? Okay, so we'll assume here. So we also have a directorate of, of um, project and fundraising. Because when, when you see all those great outreaches we're doing, check. Trust me, a lot of money are involved. There's a lot of money involved, trust me. Uh, and the bigger it is, the bigger the funds. That... Also, so if a uh, man, oh, he's around, God bless you. So uh, I'll be looking right away, he's around. Also, the third director we have is the director of publicity and media. I mean, because of course you know that there is no way you, you can do an excellent outreach without needing to fight. Also, need to um, have a good media strategy so that we can attract partners, we can attract volunteers, and all of that. So we also have a directorate of um, media and publicity. So today. We have the directors of one of our directorates today that will be speaking to us. Um, nobody just becomes a director in Czech without being tested and trusted. Uh, this is a man um, who has been in Czech for quite a long time, uh, many years. Um, he eventually grew to become the HOD physiotherapy of Czech. And um, he helped to, to develop Czech's physiotherapy department to be one of the most organized and effective department of Czech, considering that physiotherapy uh, is one service that is not regularly provided at most outreaches. 
So Czech is one of the pioneer um, outreach organization that plays a lot of emphasis on physiotherapy. Uh, from there, he was uh, promoted to be the head of the Lagos chapter, where he helped uh, develop uh, the Lagos, uh, one of, uh, I mean, Lagos chapter is one of uh, newest professional chapters, and he helped develop it to be one of the best professional chapters we have in Czech. And um, today is our director of programs, and he's someone that has a great understanding of Czech and someone that is quite organized and quite cerebral. So join me today as I welcome Mr. Anyoliki to speak to us about Czech's program and outreach strategy. Thank you, you have the floor, Mr. Anyoliki. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening. I hope I'm audible and I hope um, everyone can yes. see me. Sorry, I, okay. I am having to present from my office uh, and there's no power. So um, can the slides be put up so we can get right into our talk for this evening? So the admin should put up the slide now. I miss, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so can everybody see the slides? Okay, excellent. And I hope I'm audible, please, in case I become inaudible, just type in the chat box, I will see it so I can adjust. Okay, so um, I'll be speaking briefly about the overview of Czech programs and activities this evening. It's a very broad overview. So um, please, next slide. Outline the slide, please. Okay, good. So there are four things, major things we'll be talking about. I have 30 minutes to do that. I hope I'll be able to, excuse me, wrap it up on time. So we'll be talking about operational definitions and then the scope. It's just to like familiarize us with exactly what we're supposed to be doing in check as um, volunteers, as core members, as part of the workforce generally. This is a training for the workforce. Then we'll be going on to the workforce expectation. So there are different categories in the workforce and we have all categories represented in this evening. So the different expectations we have from each category of the workforce. Then um, the third one was supposed to be an update of our program and activity outline for the year. However, it will take, the discussion will take a slightly different turn. And finally, we would speak briefly about our operational priorities, which is really, you can hold the first three as the preamble, then that last one is the main talk for this evening. So I'll try to see how I can speak through the first three. Hopefully, before the year ends, we might be able to come up with a manual to detail the first three, and possibly the last one too. Okay, so let, next slide, please. Okay, so um, I'm sure many of us are familiar with all these terms. I mean, the last term, even features in the name of Czech as um, an organization. So, um, and we use these terms in different ways. So, these are an effort to standardize the understanding of these terms. So, I'll just give um, some definitions that we've come to, that have come to be stable over time and we see how they can tie into each other so that when we speak, we are all talking about the same thing. So activity one. So um, of course, we know, as we know, activity is anything that involves actions or functions, and is usually embedded within a process. That much is clear from the dictionary. So in Czech, we will use activity to refer to any actions or functions either involved in a process or encompassing several processes that helps us to, uh, that is tied or that is, that, that is related to the raison d'etre of Czech as an organization. What do I mean by this? So we say Czech, that our raison d'etre is to provide healthcare or to take healthcare to underserved communities. Though, if you are to 
speak of this in light of yesterday's um um yesterday's um presentation i would rather we say to take healing to underserved communities so the healing in, encapsulates healthcare so by the way healing is also the acronym of our health education package so i mean on both counts we are accurate so the, so, so activity encompasses everything that we do in pursuit of our focus. Let me put it that way, because I will not need I will not need to make a slight distinction under the next um, definition. So let us hold that in our hands. So activity is anything that we do in pursuit of checks focus. Checks focus is taking healing to underserved communities. Although the underserved there now now is more weighted heavily to healthcare. But I mean, anywhere where healthcare, any community underserved by healthcare is likely to be on LD many means more than one. So then we'll go on to operation. Now, operation is a subset of activities. I believe you're taking it. Operations, we are conceiving it to be a subset of activity that, that is directly in prosecution of our core mission. I hope we note a, the subtle distinction. Activity has to do with our overall focus. So there are things that we do that are covered under activity that won't be covered under operation. So operation is tied directly to our core mission. Our core mission is the acronym EU from MAC 923. So we're talking about healthcare, education, advocacy, and the love of God. So that's for operation. Then now, a further subset of operation now is program. So program now refers to those um, operations that are in direct prosecution of what we've talked about, the commission that we have preplanned and is a routine occurrence. So this covers both outreaches as well as the proposed mission. So the main distinction between other types of operation and program A will be that um, program is always um, programs are always directed to beneficiaries that are that are outside. Like they are, they are, they are always a visible and quantifiable beneficiary of program. Whereas some of our operations have no immediate beneficiaries as it were, but it helps us provide better programs to our beneficiaries. So currently now, the only type of program that we have, that we have consistently undertaken are outreaches. Outreaches, but there are other, other types of programs that we are planning to begin to roll out commencing from this year. So I will, before I talk about the other types, because the other types are in, uh, um, are in our operational mission. So the one that is dear to my heart there is advocacy. We've, not, we've managed to not do so much of it except incidentally. So I'm proposing that this year will be more intentional about advocacy. And our advocacy will be in different um, directions. Advocacy to stakeholders, advocacy to government bodies, advocacy to international agencies that can provide um, support for our activities and so on and so forth. So basically we'll be advocating for our primary constituency. That's the um, underserved communities we reach out to. But back to the discussion. So outreach is what we've been familiar with. So right now, the core remit of this role is preparing, planning, and prosecuting outreaches. So there are different types of outreaches that we undertake, but there are some nomenclatures that we use in association with them. So we talk about major outreaches. We talk about sometimes we don't say it, but there are some minor outreaches that we carry, generally the ones that our students' arms carry out, which feature mainly health education, sensitization, health education. And then we also have mega outreaches. So the difference between major and mega outreaches really 
is in the scope of services provided and then sometimes the number of days. So basically, we, we, our mega outreaches are typically more than a day. Where, and the ones where we do just a day, there's surgery involved, there's all, all the services. So, but mega outreaches, the ones we've been doing, some last up to a day, but most are just a day's outreach, we go and come back the same day. And then we don't spend the whole day there, and then typically we don't offer surgery. Or we, man, we try to offer every other um, service that is covered under our umbrella. Whereas mini out, well, nobody calls them mini outreaches, but I mean, we can call them that. They are more like education drive. So we go out to secondary schools, we'll give um, radio talks, we'll give internet sensitization and all of that. We produce videos. We have not done so much of these other types, but we are hoping, but we are, we are open that we'll be able to do more of this in the coming check here. Okay, so then finally, mission. So mission is envisioned as a more permanent outreach, a more permanent and a more extended outreach. So right now, I think currently the longest outreach we ever undertaken is a four-day outreach. So we are taking that as, as a cutoff for our mission. So anything longer than four days is already turned into a work week. So anything longer than four days, we are proposing to call it a mission. So currently we don't have any yet, but I mean, if the door opens for it this year, we are not averse to taking it up. Okay, so that's that for operational definitions and scope. Um, so if you have any questions with all these things that we're talking about, you can write them down or put them in the chat box. If someone should take note of the question, by the time we're done, we'll just run through all of them. So next slide, please. Okay, so workforce expectations. So with everything that we've been talking about, the question now must have occurred to many of us that all of this that we're talking about, who are those to carry them out? So the, so the major aspect of our workforce that we depend on to carry out these things are our core members. Core membership for the purpose of check refers to a person who is involved in both our activities and the organization. So while I was talking about activity, I was supposed to contrast it with administration or organization, but some other people will be talking about aspects of that. Dr. Leia talked about talked briefly about projects and um, fundraising. So that's an organizational endeavor. But core members are involved in both checks activities and checks organization. So that, so that means there are commitments that they owe, as it were, to check. Commitments in terms of financial support, in terms of prayer support, in terms of presence, and in terms of participation in activities. So these are non-negotiable because all the plans, all the visions, all the aspirations, and the mission that we are enunciating, if our core members are not fully involved, then, I mean, in the name, we have Czech Medical Missions Incorporated. It refers to all the core members. It's not a, fa it's not a fancy addition to the title. It's literally every core member is Czech in their own little way. And they're the ones that make up whatever success that Czech is going to uh, achieve. However, we also realize that there are some who would like to participate in our workforce, but do not have the time or are not uh, well placed to give the sort of um, commitments that we demand of core members. So sometimes, especially where we have workforce strategies, we allow such people to come in as auxiliary volunteers. So, but over the years, this category has been abused a lot. So we are proposing to streamline it. So of course, the more detailed, um, there are some of us on this um, Zoom call who probably came in as auxiliary volunteers. By the way, auxiliary volunteering is open only to professionals. All student arms are expected to be core members. So the other, um, the other categories that we have here are open only to professional uh, arm. So the auxiliary volunteer is envisioned as someone who while not being a core member, is a full integral part of our workforce. 
and they are usually medical professionals. I forgot to say that core members can be either medical professionals or non-medical professionals, either students in health science training or students in non-health science course training. So anyone who basically has a ask to serve and is willing to give the commitments to serve and to participate is welcome as a core member. But for auxiliary volunteers, we generally prefer to take healthcare personnel, except we have some organizational needs that we are unable to or unable or unwilling to outsource. So then we can take an auxiliary volunteer for such needs, maybe accounting or legal or what have you. Then technical partners. So the first two members of the workforce that we were talking about. Like Dr. Larry retreated yesterday, Czech is a youth organization. And then we are aware of realities. We, be, we know that once a person is passing the age of 28, 29, I mean, for the generality of people, external responsibilities begin to pile up, both at work, family related, and other things. So we, and also by that age, many people have already been in, in their professional workforce for some time. So they've acquired a lot of skills that are beneficial to us in check, but they might not be in a position to um, offer us the full commitment required of core members. And yet you also consider they might be too old to just be male auxiliary volunteers, because I mean, some of them are in positions to give more to us than as auxiliary volunteers. By the way, auxiliary volunteers are not eligible to old leadership positions. They just come in to supplement our workforce. So we are envisioning technical partner as a person who is usually advanced in their profession and is generally over the age of 30 or 35, generally over 35, but I mean, people between 30 and 35, so you can demonstrate how busy they, they are. And they, if they have something beneficial to offer us professional wise, can be um, absorbed as technical volunteer. But now all these um, roles, auxiliary volunteer, technical volunteer, we, there, are, there are some minimum expectations we have of them. So anyone who is coming in into our workforce in these roles, there is a volunteering, there is a, there is a volunteering or partnership covenant, which they have to fill. And then the application has to be made directly to the programs unit until we make more permanent arrangements for that so that we know everyone who is in our workforce and then we can plan appropriately for our programs. And finally, the grant facilitator is not so much of a workforce role as a role that someone can adopt. But this really comes up when a member or maybe an auxiliary volunteer is inviting us, is hosting us for a, an outreach in their own area, probably their own town or in their own church or what have you, or in their locality or neighborhood. It just means that they are on ground, so they, so they are really our logistics point person for that place. So we also consider it as a workforce, um, as a workforce role. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so now we are on the 23-24 check here program and activities. I just want to make a brief commentary about that notation. So the check here properly, properly, starts and ends with worship. And worship is the second um, Saturday of December. But for convenience, we assume that the check year starts 1st of December of a year and terminates 30th of November of another year. And that is part of the reason why we are having this training at this time, this is literally the last week of November. So we are to go trained and empowered into the new check year. So that's what I'm noting it as. 23, 24 check here. So um, ordinarily, we were supposed to present the program calendar should have been ready by now, but a mixture of um, circumstances has not made it ready. However, we are giving all units and chapters the grace of December, well, the first two weeks of December to compile their programs, the ones that are already planned or are in the offing or are a regular feature. So whatever program, you see I put the program calendar under construction. So ideally, we're supposed to open the year with a program calendar already pre-published. So everybody knows what the organization is doing. So, but the program that um, we are going to input into the program calendar 
should have the following notation under the program calendar. We can see the day and date. We can see the type and description. We can see the location. We can see the purpose and services to be rendered. That's so for programs that are already on the calendar. So there are some, there are some statutory programs that we have. So I listed two at the third bullet point. We have worship. So worship for day date is Saturday night, December 2023. Type description, of course, worship is not an operation. We are classifying it as a program, but in reality, by uh, definition, it's an activity. But it's also a program to us because that is where we gather together and rob minds. So in a sense, it's not a direct prosecution of a uh, um, core mission, but in another sense, we are tooling up, and then it can easily become a platform for advocacy. So we'll take it as a program. And of course, our Igeru Mega Outreach, that's for the entire body in November. It's a statutory program. Although we are hoping that in years to come, it might even expand to become a more permanent mission. But I mean, it's so those are the two that we have. So if we have to populate the calendar, I would like other um, what the chapters and the units, if they already have already planned, I'm aware that Lagos chapter has two already planned. They can forward it to us. But for other units and chapters who want to give or who are planning a program, if you're supposed to send a program brief to me directly, um, I, when I'm done with this, I will give out my number in the chat box. So send it to me via WhatsApp direct. I'll put my number and my email, or you can send it via email. So in addition to the items under the program calendar, any program brief for a proposed program must include the, these other things, the personnel requirements for that program, the source, sources of funding, then the logistic and equipment needs, and other miscellaneous information as my help us to um, consider the program then grant approval. So for the coming year, there will be no unilaterality of action. Every program has to be cleared. Okay. So, um, and then we are hoping that by the last week of December, we can be able to publish a program calendar for the year so that everybody knows what each other is doing. And then we also, we also find out areas in which we can come into help. Next slide, please. Okay, so our 2023-24 operational priorities. Our priority is always Matthew 9, 35 to 38, which is the acronym of our uh, uh, core mission. That is E, healthcare services, education, advocacy, and love of God. So if you notice, advocacy is italicized, love of God is bold and in capitals. Meaning it is this, the love of God that produces the other aspects of the services that we are that we are providing. But I, I italicize advocacy because that is something I want us to go into now. Like I want us to really focus on. And advocacy is easy to do these days with the um, instrumentality of the internet. So we are going to be um, relying a lot on that, both to give ourselves a bit more publicity, but more importantly, to get much needed information out to people that don't have it. And then you notice that the second bullet point is underserved communities. So now, historically, we've visited underserved communities, usually located in rural areas that have no access to healthcare. But I consider any, any community that does not have access to timely health information to be underserved. We've done some outreaches in some urban areas. I mean, and then there are so many, there are so many more areas of intervention that we could have. Like I said, we'll be looking a lot more at online, um, online activities to bring ourselves to our constituencies. Then next slide, please. Okay, so concluding remarks. So everything I've said so far, like I said, hinges on five key things. Four of them 
are coming from us. The fifth one has been delivered to us, but we must take hold of it. So um, I would like to speak a lot about, uh, well, I'll take them in turn. So the first is, you know, we've been talking a lot about commitment, but trust me, the kind of commitment that we are talking about is not, um, is not um, high service commitment. It's not the commitment like that, oh, let me just do so that they can see me. Let me just show up so that they can know I'm there. It's a commitment that understands the importance of what you're doing and has the desire to make a real impact, not just going through the motions. I mean, I don't think there's anyone who was coerced to be in check. Everyone is here. Of course, I know most, most of us are here on invitation, but everyone is here voluntarily. It's literally, I mean, you are volunteers. So I would like us to act like this. So commitment includes us being... Um, um, being proactive about things. And then a, a key point of commitment I want to know. There's no one that belongs to check and more forcefully. Everyone in check belongs to check in at least two ways. So there's like a, there, there's like a cross-function matrix. So there's like a triangula triangulation of um, location. So on the one hand, you belong to a chapter. Everyone must be in a chapter. So we'll be liaising with the chapter is to ensure that everyone, even our auxiliary volunteers must be attached to a chapter. They might not be on the chapter's WhatsApp group, but they must be attached to a chapter, and that chapter leadership must know them. And then the other part of it is everyone must belong to a professional unit. Even if you're not a health professional, there's a unit for um, people like that. We have a general logistics unit. And every so, so every, at the end of the day, there are two ways by which you can locate the person. So you're in a chapter which corresponds to the town you're living in, and you're in a unit which corresponds to the line of occupation you're in. And those two are the primary focus of our loyalty. Now, I'll be addressing some of these to our core members. Our core members are expected to pay dues, to attend meetings, to attend yes, prayer meetings, to um participate so. to participate in their activities of the chapter and their youth. So can, we, can we turn off uh, the person can it turn off their mic? Or can the admin mute them? Thank you. So so our commitment is very important for us to achieve everything that we've outlined. So um, that's that for commitments. We'll have a lot more to say about commitment later on. We'll go on to imagination. So a write down commitment is imagination. So commitment is good, but when mixed with imagination, it works wonder. So we are not just to be committed in the sense of doing only what you're told to do. I mentioned proactiveness. And proactiveness must be underpinned by imagination. So we must be looking at the big picture. What are we supposed? What is so, so? Everybody knows what the mission is. How can we deliver this mission more effectively? How can we be more efficacious in our activities? That's where imagination comes in. So, commitment is to structure that are already in place. Imagination is bringing forth things that do not exist. So, for of course, for us, for Christians, imagination is continuous with faith. Because if you look at what we are about, going again by what Dr. Lair talked about yesterday, check is a product of it all through and through. It's not as if there's someone somewhere with a sack of money funding us. No. Everything that you see us doing is what we do in obedience to God's call. And no one can work with God if with, um, there is no faith in God. But faith acting in one dimension is not that imagination. You look at what does not exist yet in our operation but that will be important for our operations to be prosecuted. And then we think of structures on how it can be done. The whole idea of check itself came about when someone dared to act on their God-given mission. And then imagination helped them to come up with what we have today. So we need our imagination in some doses, but 
as I would talk about in um, the other points here, that imagination has to be con um, has to be constrained by different. But before we talk about the other things, our motivation also, each of us must continually ensure that we are in this for the right reasons. Like I said earlier, we are all volunteers, it's a voluntary work. But I'm also aware that the world today expects or rewards voluntary participation. So a lot of people are yes, they can put in their CVs. While putting your voluntary work in your CV is not a bad idea, we should have a better motivation than that. This is a faith-based organization, and I believe we are all Christians. And the proper thing that ought to motivate us is love of God. Now, this love of God constrains our hearts and it moves us to act in the best interest and welfare of our fellow human beings. And you would see the people who are motivated by this law, by their conduct on and off outreaches. So I'm, I'm challenging every one of us to aim to be one of those people who are rightly motivated. And then going along with motivation is obedience. So obedience now speaks to the imagination I talked about earlier. On the one hand, obedience will be the outworking of our commitment. On the other hand, obedience is an act of worship for each one of us. We are supposed to be properly submitted to our leaders. Whatever anyone is telling us is not so that they can enjoy superiority over us. It's for the organization to move forward. So let us endeavor to make it a watchword in this year. And then finally, the armor of God. Like Paul says, it puts on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand. I mean, I could run through the armor of God, armor of God again, the helmet of salvation. I believe everyone here is saved, but it's not just enough to be saved. You must constantly walk out this salvation with fear and trembling. We must always do a self audit, a self check. Am I standing in the faith? Am I walking as I ought? I do not mean we should become pathologically inclined to introspection. That's not what the Christian is called to. But periodically, we must do this self-check. And as the Holy Spirit deals within us, it will prompt us when we are no longer working in the past. Then we move on from element of salvation to the breastplate of righteousness. So now this comes to deliberately choosing to do good each time. Remember, we had a cascade of um part of the pillars we talked about yesterday and to your faith add knowledge and to your knowledge add diligence so this is also speaking to our righteousness we must deliberately go after the best thing so the slides have gone off for okay we must deliberately go after the best things we must always constantly submit our utmost for the master's eyes then we go on to the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, then the feet shod with the um, gospel of peace. So all this speaks to our engagement with the world around us. We must always strive in, the, in, in trying to appear better. Now we are in trying to give the gospel a good name. We should not become liars. We should not fall to the trick of packaging. No. We must always give ourselves as we are. And this will be a motivation for us to even strive to improve ourselves better, to be better and better. And then the world must not leave our mind. We must be known as people of the world. That means we must drink it in daily. We must refresh ourselves with it so that it would fill us and then we can um, act it out. And then finally, we endeavor to share the gospel in word and in deed. It's not enough to only share it by word. Our deeds must match what we see. But it's not enough to just act it out alone. There are times when we must consciously get in front of it and let people know what we stand for. So um, I believe with all of this, once we lock this down, there's nothing that we want, that we plan to achieve as per programs this year that we can't. And I believe God who has given this mission into our hands will bless our every effort. Thank you very much for listening. So I have time to take our questions now. Yeah, that, that was that was such a wonderful presentation uh, by um, our programs director, Mr. Emmanuel Ayonelikliki. Uh, one of the things I always say God has given us in check is the gift of men. You know, uh, uh, 
happened in the sacrifice to make this happen. You know, when God called Moses, one of the things that Moses said is that, look, I am Samara, you know, and God said, okay, I will send Aaron, you know, and uh, for those that know me, I'm not so much of a very, very organized person. I'm just the kind of person that believes, <laughs> let's get the job done. And I'm happy to have people around me that are a lot more organized. Um, I look forward to when Tokwe or Shaw will be speaking to on Thursday. She's also a lot more, I mean, people have organized, helped to organize us. And that's why I really appreciate Mr. Emmanuel Leonike. You will see from his speech that he truly understands uh, what Czech stands for. And I quite agree with everything that he has talked about. So please, I want us to have questions. Um, as you know already, um, every of the heads of the different professional units are accountable to him, to the program director. So please, um, as he said, and also the chapters too, please uh, make sure you send your reports um, so that it can help uh, proper planning and so that we can have our calendar out as soon as possible so that we can have a 2024 that is much organized. If we're going to have multiplied impact, then we have to be much more organized. So we're expecting questions. I know many of us have questions and clarifications. Don't wait to ask it later. Please ask it now. If you can type it, just type it. You know, don't assume. And just anything you are not clear about, please just ask it. Please, the floor is open, please. You can, you can unmute and ask your question. You can type. We just have a few minutes left. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to believe you are shy. Please, you can meet and ask your question. And it could be on anything you are not clear about, even beyond what was discussed today, it could be related to what was discussed yesterday. Please, let's feel free to, so that we can check no areas of emphasis, areas of clarification. I mean, we are compressing so much within a short time. So it's possible that um, some things may not have been uh, clearly. Uh, communicated. So it's by your questions that we'll know. Everybody's shy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, someone asked a question. Someone asked a question, yeah. Can I cite this time? Oh, okay. Okay, so thank you very much. So um, the question is um, about chapters. The question is, um, I want to explain more about chapters. Okay, so as I said earlier, so um, we are envisioning chapters as the basic units of belonging in Czech. But that basic unit of belonging will relate primarily to core members. So maybe I, I should go to core members. So core members are those volunteers or those participants in check who are both involved in check activities as defined, and then are also involved in checks organization. Because whether we like it or not, check is not merely a vehicle, although it's a vehicle for what we do, but it's also an organization with a life of its own, with a legal existence. So those of its um, volunteers and participants in activities who are involved in its organization as well as its activities are core members. Now, assuming check were to have employees, those who would be involved just in the organization. They won't, be, they won't necessarily be involved in the activities. They won't be core members. They will be employees. But our core members are both involved in the organization and in the activity. So, the basic unit of belonging to check is a chapter. And for now, chapters are geographical. So if you're in Lagos and you're a core member, you are expected to associate with check primarily through the Lagos chapter. If you're in Ibadan and you are a check member, you're expected to associate with check primarily, associate and participate with check primarily through the Ibadan chapter and so on and so forth. And if you're leaving the country, there is, there is a plan in place, actually chapters already for different regions of the world, but there's a plan in place to now streamline all of these. And there are also plans in place to streamline chapters appropriately, such that a chapter would become 
standardized across check. But for now, we still have chapters of uneven sizes. So there are some chapters that cover a state. There are some chapters that cover a town. There are towns that we have more than one chapter, usually towns that have students and um, professional chapters. And there are chapters that cover entire regions or even continents. We have a North American chapter. That's an entire continent. But before the end of this year, we'd have standardized it such that we'd have several more um, territorial organizations, and then a chapter will become well standardized. But until then, we should make do with the chapters we have. I think we would try and provide a list of all the chapters we have on the general workforce page, and then the contact details of each chapter head. So in as much as this chapter is expected to go after the members in their location, each core member too should seek out the chapter coordinator and integrate themselves. So anyone wants to have any dealing with central check, it has to be through their chapter coordinator. I hope I address your question effectively. Okay, so the person has the question, I see what is, is so that's the Okum chapter where we currently are. So I guess why it's not too familiar. It's, uh, so we're, we're still coming up in the Okum chapter. We had an outreach um, last week to Ipako. Uh, okay. I think I said a few things about it. Yeah. So it's the youngest Czech chapter. Okay. Um, of course, we said in your state, your state has about five major geopolitical zones. You have Ibadan, Ogumosho, Okeogun. Or your and Ibarapa. Yeah, so yeah. um, so we have a panel with Okeogun. And if God permits, we'll have in Ibarapa. But the whole idea is just as you said, and uh, we're looking at chapters in towns and cities, you know, where people can easily come together. For example, so what's in Okeogun can easily meet together. Um, you know, your state is quite large. Those in Ogumo can meet together easily, those in um, Ibadan can meet together. I think why Lagos now may have a challenge meeting together is that Lagos is a very, very big place. <laughs> you know, so probably until the chat until it's uh, broken down into cities, um, it may be difficult meeting physically. The same way to just as you said, uh, we have a chapter for Europe, uh, for North America, we have for Asia and all that. And um, the online is still the platform that those chapters still meet. But probably over time, either those chapters will have a plan to meet once in a year physically or something, but. As we said, we are going to work on standardizing um, all these things so that everybody will be involved. But one of the things I just want to really add is that what, you know, I used to be bothered at the time that um, check was not too organized. But I've learned from experience and from working with other organizations that no organization become organized in a day. So we just have to mm -hmm. keep trying to organize and organize until we become very, very organized. So I've stopped getting bothered about uh, we not being perfectly organized, but we, we must keep making efforts Ensure that things are standardized. So that someone check and oh, this is how. And I know that will help us. And I'm happy with the moves that the program the department the carried out. That um, 2024, the check could be a lot more organized than than we used to be. So I don't know if you have any other question. Um, we have how many minutes more? Okay, we just have few. We, oh, we just have three minutes more, so I'm not sure we'll be able to take any more questions because of our time. Um, so please, pages are there. Please let's post our question on the page. The program director is on the page. He's going to be answering our question. Please, I want to appeal to us. Let's make the best use of these opportunities. We need your questions so that we can know area loopholes that we are not looking into. You understand one of the things privileges I have when I have people like Mr. Yonleke around me is for them is when they ask me critical questions that forces me to see loopholes that we are we need to pay attention to, you know. And some of these people that are directors today, I mean, critical analysis is very very important. Also, learning we are just privileged believers, so it's it's possible that there are one or two things that uh, we are not paying attention to. So please don't keep those questions on your mind. If there are things you think we are not doing well or we can do better, things you don't, things that we still check. Please, we need you to hack us 
and allow us to clarify those questions. On this note, we're going to be running up. But one more thing before we round up, aside from our meeting tomorrow, to look at the publicity and media department of check, which is very, very important. You guys are going to help us with media and publicity tonight. A worship is in just two weeks. We have the posters out already and a short video. So please, uh, we want you to help us push it out on your social media by 7 p.m. tonight, which is in the next, uh, immediately after this meeting. We're going to send again to the page. Uh, we want as many people as possible to be around to also know what we do in check. Yeah, and I believe that God will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this evening. We ask that you help us to fulfill every of the assignment you have given us in check in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. amen. Before you leave, can you, just, can you just type an amen before you leave? I want to see your amen typed out there. Yeah, I can see, Manuel. Yes, thank you. Keep sending your amen. Keep sending your yeah, amen. I can see you. Oh, like, Dave, I can see you. Yes, Tony, I can see you. Mujetulu, I can see you. Lekon Bashi.